We're talking law on Radio 97. If there's a question that you have to do with the law, there are plenty of questions coming up. Make sure you uh, email it to us. You can get the info uh, to radio97.com.au. At the front there, you'll find a couple of ways of uh, getting the uh, the questions to us. And it's been happy to answer them on the radio for you on a Thursday morning. Just go to radio97.com.au. Thank you, Wayno. Have you been rejected from a licensed venue for having tattoos? It may seem harsh, but there are definitely two sides to every story, isn't there, Despina? There is. So there were a couple of stories over the holidays I'm aware of. There was a Brisbane woman that was rejected for her facial tattoos. Um, and then recently there was a woman rejected at Burley Pavilions um, as well for her neck tattoo. So we want to talk about this because I think it's on the rise. And I, and there are two sides uh, for the licensee uh, who has the venue and for patrons. And we really need to, I think, educate everybody on both sides, not just patrons. It's about licensees as well, about what the current laws say. And we're only talking about Queensland, remember? All right, so not New South Wales. So uh, very quickly, in 2016, the Serious and Organised Crime Legislation Amendment Act was passed. And that act then changed the Liquor Act, okay, uh, in Queensland. Um, and, and that provided these new uh, laws, and some of them are discretionary, about what licensees can do um, if there are people that are wanting to uh, come into uh, the premises, and it's called refusal of service, okay, and refusing people to gain entry into the premises. Um, so uh, let's talk about this a bit. So licensees are allowed to refuse someone entry um, if they're wearing or carrying prohibited items. Okay, and it is a little bit discretionary. We want to talk about that a little bit later. So uh, what does that mean, wearing or carrying prohibited items? And we really need to talk about this because we need to understand what is it? What does it mean? Is it discriminatory? It doesn't fall within the Anti-Discrimination Act. Um, we need to talk about all this stuff. Um, so uh, under the Summary Offences Act, and that's been an act around since 2005, um, it says it's illegal, illegal, right, for a person to enter licensed venues if they are wearing or carrying a prohibited items, which is defined in the Liquor Act to be uh, including an item of clothing or jewellery or accessory that displays a few things. For example, the name of, of an identified uh, criminal organisation, um, a club patch insignia or logo, inverted commas colours, that's they've got it there with the laws, um, any image symbol abbreviation that indicates an identified organisation. And they've got an example on the website, and I'll give those details later. Um, they've got one, the symbol one, like the number one, I should say, with the percentage symbol. And then they've got the number one percentage symbol, ER follows. So for some reason, that's obviously uh, popular. It's probably the one, the one percenters, mm -hmm. yeah. Yes, exactly. So that's that's already been identified. And on the website, which is business.queensland.gov.au, and you go under licensing laws, there's actually you can find all of the symbols that they've listed and I'm and I've identified that are linked to criminal organizations. Um, and I would hope that the licensees who run these venues would be quite aware of them uh, and to try and differentiate between those and other symbols that are not linked to criminal organisations, as far as they're aware anyway, because that could change um, as well. So uh, refusal of entry is therefore based on current laws and regulations. So in the first instance, you can't say it's uh, discriminatory. You can't, you know, straight away say, oh, well, you've, this is discriminatory, you've refused me entry. Well, let's go back a bit. Mm -hmm. And what's the basis that you're being refused? So um, licensees, though, still need to be careful um, to the reasons for the refusal of service, um, because it, unfortunately it looks like it is a bit of a discretionary um, aspect for these licensees to make that decision on the spot, which I would think would be quite difficult, particularly mm -hmm. at night time, particularly when there's not great lighting. If you're supposed to try and differentiate between maybe a facial tattoo that is culturally based, which I understand this Brisbane woman had, versus something, a marking or a symbol that is actually linked to a criminal organisation. Yeah. Right. And that would be quite difficult. And the licensees are subject to hefty fines. And that's the other thing people need to realize. So if a licensee knowingly allows entry to someone that has these symbols um, that are unlawful um, to to have people wear them and then gain entry, if they knowingly allow that to occur, um, the fines are almost up to 15,000. 
Mm. So it's not cheap. It's So it's really something um, that the licensees do have to be careful of. But I also think it comes down to properly training your staff at these venues yeah. and making sure they're educated and that they understand properly um, the basis for the refusal, what's reasonable and what isn't. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if all venues are doing that. And they really, in my view, should come up with a risk um, assessment management plan, which sounds all formal, but basically get everybody around a table, make sure that they understand, well, here are all the symbols on the website. These are all the ones linked to criminal organisations as Queensland governments identified, um, not some arbitrary person that's identified, versus, well, what isn't included in this list to what may be allowed entry. For example, someone says, well, this is a Maori tattoo or is this a Papua New Guinean tattoo or some other culturally based tattoo. The woman in Brisbane, I understand, was Papua New Guinean. So mm -hmm. she was quite upset by being refused entry. And she but had a again, large face tattoo, to clarify, it was on her face? Yes, yes. Yeah. So I think it's incumbent upon licensees to make sure that their staff are properly trained uh, now and in the future um, because I think that's going to be an ongoing problem. I don't think that people who have tattoos are just going to, you know, somehow get rid of them. Um, you know, it's a personal choice. Of course. Um, so I think people need to look at that quite carefully. But on the and and because you do have discrimination laws, and they can't be seen to discriminate against people for race, gender, religion, etc. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um. And if someone has been aggrieved, so if you go to a venue, you've been knocked back, you think they're acting unreasonable. What can you do? Right. You think they've got unwarranted grounds? Mm -hmm. Well, we do have the Queensland Human Rights Commission, so you can lodge a complaint. Okay, and say this has been, this is a discriminatory act. I was refused entry on this basis. Now, why would you do that? If you like this venue, your friends go to this venue, you want to gain entry to this venue and you keep getting knocked back. I would have thought that it would be worth lodging a complaint mm -hmm. because ultimately the Human Rights Commission will investigate the complaint. And if the outcome is that they were, that they considered the licensee's conduct to be unreasonable, then you would be gaining entry to that venue. But at that point in time, at the end of the day, it's still up to the licensee. Yes. Yeah, so yeah. just going back to basic laws, for example, at common law, I mean, you've got licensees that can make rules about dress codes. So remember, um, point, yeah. uh, that was a big topic years ago, maybe not so much now because, you know, um, I, suppose, I suppose social acceptance and dress codes have changed quite a bit. But, you know, you used to have lots of venues say no thongs, no oh, board shorts. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And that's discretionary. Um, yeah. So, uh, yep, the Liquor Act has also recognised that and at common law that licensees can impose these laws for dress codes and it actually, is discretionary. Yeah. I actually saw one recently in Sydney uh, and they had it clear as day on their website, their dress code. And it's, and I've never seen this before. It said, uh, you must have clothes that are uh, fit for your shape. Wow. Okay. That's a new one. That's, what does that yeah. mean? Strange. Talk <laughs> about discretionary there. Yeah. It said, example, not overly baggy or overly, I guess you're showing too much skin to some degree. Mm -hmm. And I thought maybe it's because of, is it a gang thing? Is it that they're afraid of people hiding things under their clothes or they just don't, they, they want everyone to look real nice and fitted? I don't, it was I so bizarre. Uh, to that, me, I think that it probably has come about because uh, the person who owns the venue has had complaints from other patrons about a, the certain way that certain people dress and they've had enough complaints to, you know, um, create this, this dress code and enforce yeah. it. Mm. Um, but look, uh, the last thing I want to say is if you are a licensee, there are on the website, you really should have a look at um, the tips that they provide on refusing service to patrons. There's lots of do's and there's lots of don'ts. Yeah. And there's a whole list of things that they really should have a look at. Go and properly train your staff. On the flip side to that, patrons out there, be aware that there are laws out there where licensees can refuse you entry on certain grounds, like I have mentioned today, but they do have to be reasonable and not be seen to be discriminatory. Mm. Or put in a complaint. <laughs> exactly. Go to the Human Rights can. Commission if you feel you've been quite aggrieved. Absolutely. Exactly. There's always a venue if you're aggrieved, always and somewhere that, you can lodge a complaint. <laughs> yeah, that's it. And uh, that website again, business.qld.gov.au. And if anyone does want to get in touch with you directly, Justina, if they have a legal question, where can they go? So they can find the office, double five, two, nine, one, two, nine, four. Of course, they can email info at 
Priala Legal, P R I A L A Legal.com.au. And of course, once again, I will be uploading all of this on YouTube uh, on the weekend if anyone's missed the whole segment today or they want to hear it all over again. <laughs> Terrific. All right. Uh, plenty of juicy stuff next week, too. So we look forward to seeing you then. Great. Look forward to it, guys. See you then. Bye bye.